Welcome, welcome back everybody to the Search Show 24-7. This is the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie review. So, let's get right into it. Alright guys, Amazing Spider-Man 2 starring Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Dane DeHaan, and Jamie Foxx. Okay, it's a lot of things that's going great for this movie. A lot of things that works really, really well in this movie. But it's things that do not work in this movie. So let's talk about the things that don't work first. I think what what this movie has an issue with is just what it wants to really be. Like it gives you this emotional roller coaster of feelings that you don't really need to have in this kind of movie. Like I don't care. I want it to be dark, but then it wants to be you know good and light fun-hearted and I know this is spider-man he's supposed to have it but you they have a dramatic shift like too dramatic like if you want to have both keep it on a even kind of an even uh, playing field don't have it really really dark and make it a little bit funny down here keep it on an even playing field um, a great example of that is um, I would say Captain America 2 the Winter Soldier where everything was on an even playing field it didn't do this Spider-Man 2 of uh, the amazing Spider-Man 2 does that a lot and it kind of throws you out of uh, certain scenes and stuff um, so that was one of my big big gripes about this another thing that I really didn't like was just scenes that just ended like out of nowhere like it just like battle scenes where it needed like the battle started great and grand and everything looked good everything was pretty the way you know he was fighting the uh the way he was fighting electro the way he was fighting green goblin and it, it just ends and you're like well is it where's the rest of it like it just ends so abrupt that it takes you out of it too so i, I just wish they could have wrapped up certain scenes a little bit better um so it, that throws you off or it just takes you off off balance a little bit just a little bit for me um another thing I, I didn't really think that it worked was uh i love the fact that you know they, they they're going all out with their like super villains and stuff like that uh and i understand that you know spider-man he's more loving and fun type character but just like when i said about the tone it was kind of like that with the villains too now I saw this movie twice or three times when you see this I've seen this movie three times already and um, just going into the movie theater and having kids around me watching it like they understand like oh this is like just spider-man this is cool but for some of the adults and stuff when you see some of these villains like they're just so hammed up and so cheesy sometimes that you, you don't know how to feel like Jamie Foxx he starts off like super super cheesy and it's more of a of a Riddler-esque from Batman um, Forever, oh, played by Jim Carrey, just like that, where he's like obsessed with uh, Batman, and Batman gives him the cold shoulder, and then he's like out for revenge. Something like that goes in with uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Two with Jamie Foxx's character. Now, granted, uh, if you know anything about me, if you watch my videos, you know that I love Batman Forever, and the reason I love Batman Forever is Jim Carrey's Riddler. Now, Batman Forever had that 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 tone to where it was still on that that same le level playing field, like I was talking about. It was really cheesy, and it wasn't that serious. Where you can you can accept that movie for what it is if you liked it. This one was the Amazing Spider-Man Two. You you had like Jamie Fox. He wants to be serious when he's Electro, but then you dial it back like and you remember like oh he was just really nerdy and weird and stuff and they had like weird cut scenes with him uh be when he was just max dylan and that's what kind of threw me off with his character now he was great uh for what he was given now i'm not blaming anything on jamie fox because i think it's more have to do with the writing and some of the execution because i thought jamie fox was one of the standout performance in this um in this movie and i knew and you know just watching some of his interviews you knew that this was an important movie for him he always wanted to be in a superhero movie he was super excited for it um so you understand that this was really important for him so he he done the best that he could for what he was given so i appreciate that i, I felt like it was more than just the writing standpoint where they gave him like a few cheesy lines where he was like uh you know but um 
once he turns into Electro, he is Electro, and just the way he looks is very cool, and you feel for him in certain scenes, like the Times Square scene, when he's just trying to tell people to stand back, you know, I don't know what's happening to me, and people are shooting at, you feel for him for that, so I give Jamie Foxx a lot of credit for, like, making something out of nothing, you know, uh, because he had a lot to work with, uh, or he didn't have a lot to work with, and he still managed to pull out something that was still, still really good. Um, Dane DeHaan was a great character. Uh, he is a great uh, character actor. I love him in Chronicle. He was great in Lawless. Um, so I was super excited when I heard about him. But, you know, he has that moment, too, to where they they want to ham him up so much. And he does things that are, that are like, cringeworthy. But then he has that serious side to him. And he's like this emo kid. And you see that where he's trying to find that character from Chronicle. And that's where I wanted him to go. But then they, they make him a little bit cheesy in certain scenes. And you're like, oh, why you do that? So, you know, just stuff like that kind of threw me off in this movie. Um, But the great things about this movie to where I would go back to see it again. And I would go uh, buy it on DVD. Was just character moments. Like Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker, as Spider-Man, he is that. He is that character. He, character, he owns that character. Um, when I did my first review for The Amazing Spider-Man, I think I said something along the lines where I thought Tobey Maguire was the better Spider-Man, but Andrew Garfield was the better Peter Parker. Uh, oh no, I thought Tobey Maguire was the better Peter Parker and Andrew Garfield was the better Spider-Man. This one, Andrew Garfield owns both roles. He is Peter Parker, he is Spider-Man. Just a lot of great like mo emotional moments that he goes through because what's so good about spider-man is he's a character where he's so cool he's so like awesome and he does like these cool things but in his real life when he's just peter parker he has a crappy life like um you know he's got issues with his love life with you know his family you know stuff like that to where you feel for him but when he's spider-man he it's just he he's spider-man so i always like that about spider-man where he has that that just that that very turmoil type sadness to him um when he's peter parker but it never shows when he's spider-man and that's what always drew me to that character and andrew garfield really displays both of those emotions from me during this movie so i really give him a lot of praise and you can tell he's just having fun being spider-man he he's one of those um actors who just loves to be this superhero like you get from some of these i'm not gonna name people but you get from some of these superheroes that they're just superheroes just to collect the paycheck and they know that people are gonna watch it but you can tell that he likes to be Spider-Man. He loves to be Peter Parker. So that really shows in this movie. Another thing was just great was um was Emma Stone playing, you know, Gwen Stacy. A lot of great character moments with her. I love the fact that, you know, her and Andrew Garfield in real life, their boyfriend and girlfriend, and it shows in this it shows in this movie that they they really love each other they're just so small looks that they give each other those laughs and stuff you can tell that that's the kind of stuff that they they do in real life so i wouldn't be surprised if some of the stuff that they were saying and stuff it's just them improv improvising like things that they will say in real life and it shows that they're they're in love it shows like how much Peter really wants to be with her, but he made that promise to her father to stay away. And you get a lot of great emotional character moments, especially towards the end of this movie where um, the whole death scene plays out. And another thing about this movie uh, that I probably, well, it's iffy. Well, I like the execution of it and I thought it was good for the story, but I would have probably been okay if they did it another way. So in the movie, uh, if you, this is a spoiler movie, uh, spoiler video. In the movie, Gwen Stacy dies. Now, now in this, what I would have liked to happen. Now, I'm okay that she dies in the movie because it was executed really well. But I would have been okay if they just teased it and she didn't die. The reason is because of that, those character moments that her and Andrew Garfield have were just so good that I would just like to see that more in Spider-Man 3, Spider-Man 4, Amazing Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 4, and so on. I would have just liked for them to keep her. And you know, you don't have to bring in, um, you don't have to bring in the other girl. Um, you don't have to bring in Mary Jane because 
you know, the Sam Raimi had that. You know, Sam Raimi told me why they had Mary Jane. Like, if you want to really uh, go away from that and not have people, for me, if you don't want to have people, like, compare those two uh, movie series, like, just keep going, Stacy. Don't mention um, Mary Jane. She, you can have her in there, but they should never be together if you want to just have a, a movie different. So I would have liked to seen them just not kill off Gwen Stacy, but I'm okay with the fact because it does work. It's very emotional. It grabs at you. That's probably one of these scenes where uh, when it happens, because I, when I was with uh, like a lot of kids, like none of these kids like read the 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 comic book that this movie is based off of and none of these like parents they're just there because you know spider-man's cool so when it happens i was like okay how are people going to take this and when it happens you just hear a gasp out of everyone and people are just shocked because they didn't see it coming um so it, it worked really well so i give kudos to the the directors to the actors for really pulling off that scene it was very it was done really really well another thing about this movie that i really enjoyed was um the score i thought the score from han zimmer was just very well done they have a, a score with uh electro it's, it's kind of like his theme song and what's good about han zimmer when he does like scores and stuff he always have theme songs for like their characters and stuff especially like the villains you know that one string for the joker like in the dark knight you know uh the bane stuff but that that electro when they're in times square and they play like that electro background uh theme song score it's just amazing i love it so much really really well done another thing about this movie was that was just awesome is the way they they shot certain scenes the way they portrayed spider-man like i love the fact that you you show like the spidey sense and he slows it down and you they show you the entire scene play out before it actually plays out to see like oh he needs to stop this he needs to stop that he needs to save this girl in a matter of like 10 seconds and it, they show you everything that's in danger and then they execute it and i thought that was w really well done uh effect for the spidey sense um I love the way he, he swings his webs and he climbs up and that was really really interesting because you don't see that in the Sam Raimi um, in the Sam Raimi movies the way he he kills he'll hit his uh, his web and then he'll just climb up like a spider and that's what I was like oh I love that he climbs up it like a spider because he is spider-man so I, I really like that um certain scenes like I said didn't fit in this movie um i'm not trying to go too much in the spoiler but certain scenes didn't really fit uh so hopefully in amazing spider-man 3 they can fix that they can fix like too much of this don't you don't have to put all these characters in you don't like rhino he he doesn't need to be in there i thought he was a character where you don't need um you didn't need him at all um you could have just introduced him in the next movie uh he doesn't play a big part uh, it's driving me crazy that people say it's like too many villains really it's only two vi villains people it's not really it's not three you don't really have to count rhino he's just there to be there you know he's not even a villain he's over like that so i don't count him as a villain even though he is a villain it's really um it's really goblin and it's really electro and it's their show so i, I was okay with like the villain aspect i just felt like certain villains uh had weird things happen to them and they said weird things and they were written weird so that was my main gripe with this um so i, I really like i said i really enjoyed the movie it's not the best one um uh, or i think it's the best one out of the amazing spider-man i still think uh sam raimi's spider-man 2 is bet probably the best spider-man movie out so far but i think andrew garfield um it's a way better spider-man way better peter parker so overall I, I still like it i still enjoyed it i can't wait for you know uh what's to come uh hopefully i and i you know what before i go i understand why they took out um shane lee wood shane lee woody lee's um mary jane because if you remember like she was supposed to be in this movie but they cut her out and i love the fact that they cut her out it was a smart move by the director and everybody involved because it gave more time for gwen and peter and that this movie is really for them it's their story so i'm glad that they uh cut her out so i really do applaud them for that i thought it was a very smart move if you still want to have shane Lee woodley because she is a bigger uh actress now 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 that she has diversion 
do it in the next movie so i'm glad that they did that so um yeah i really enjoyed it uh hopefully they fix a lot of a lot of few nick picks that i didn't like but overall it was good what you guys think about this uh this movie please like this video comment subscribe tell me what you thought uh tell me uh you know just everything that you liked about it everything you disliked about it and as always this is the search show 24 7 be easy